Okay, so in this video, we're going to wrap up this um, kind of thread that we've been pulling through so far with this system of nonlinear um, first order differential equations over here. Um, so what we've done so far is we've um, commented that it has two equilibrium at 1 minus 1 at minus 1, 1. And uh, we linearize the system at each of those equilibrium to determine this, whether those equilibrium are stable or not. And so um, on top, this um, matrix is the corresponding matrix of coefficients of the linearized system that we got by doing this linearization process. Um, and keep in mind that this we can find by finding the Jacobian, which is this matrix of partial derivatives, and then evaluating those partial derivatives at the equilibrium. And that's another way that we could have found um, that matrix. And um, for the equilibrium at um, minus 1, 1, it's the same Jacobian, but now we evaluate it at a different point, and that's where these coefficients come from. And so um, the linearization at the first equilibrium, 1 minus 1, that had eigenvalues of minus 2 and minus 3. And so let me just say that the um, eigenvalue of 2 its corresponding eigenvector is 1 minus 3. Excuse me, that was an eigenvalue of minus 2. And the eigenvalue of lambda being minus 3, that actually has an eigenvector of 0, 1. Um, so it's a good exercise for you to verify these eigenvectors. So this is what we talked about on the previous week. Um, and so for the second linearization at the equilibrium minus 1, 1, uh, the eigenvalue of positive 2, that has an eigenvector of 1 um, minus 3 fifths. And the eigenvalue of minus 3, it also has an eigenvector corresponding to it at 0, 1. Um, and so the point of all of this is if we want to get an idea of what this looks like in the phase plane, well then we can piece these two things together. So um, up top, if I circle all of this stuff, what that would look like is if I go to 1 minus 1 over here, then what we can see is that there's one direction, namely um, moving straight in the vertical direction. So we have one eigenvector over here corresponding to lambda equals minus 3 and that one goes down. And we have a second eigenvector that has a negative slope, um, so I'm not being too particular with the exact slope, but um, for the eigenvector corresponding to lambda is minus two, that one also would go in like this. So we know what that, so we kind of know what the phase plane looks like, at least locally, really close to one minus one. And we can say the same using all of this information we can get an idea of what it looks like over here when x is minus 1 and y is 1. And so now we still have this eigenvector at 0, 1, which has a negative eigenvalue. So there's a couple of directions where we head into that. And then we have another direction, without getting too precise, um, where the eigenvalue is positive. And that's why we got a saddle over there. Um, and so we can piece those two systems, these two pictures together in one big phase plane over here. Um, so let me kind of mark the point in red. That was the one that we looked at over here. And so here you can see, here's this eigenvector which is going down, and then you have another one which is about over here where they were going in. And then um, we have a second equilibrium that was over at 1 minus 1, so that's at approximately here. And again, here we can see that we have another eigenvector for that, e for that negative eigenvalue, and then we have a separate one which is maybe more or less over here. And for these, because that eigenvalue was positive, it was heading away. And now you can see that the this kind of determines how all of the rest of the flows 
are going to um, follow. So, um, for example, here we would follow this way, but then we start to get close to this eigenvector, which tells us, oh, we need to head down here, and then we stop at this equilibrium. And if I were to start up over here, it's going to head down, it's going to follow that eigenvector, but then eventually it gets close to this eigenvector, which says go away, and it's going to spread out in that direction. Um, so now, what you, once you find all these equilibrium, and you understand how things look near each equilibrium, then you just start to patch them together, and you can piece together the full um, approximate phase plane. Um, so I'll stop with that discussion. I think what might be a good review, if you want to think about this, um, would be to go ahead and take a look at the null clines of this system, sketch the null clines for this system, and see if it gives you the same story. In other words, that uh, the long-term behavior of the solutions um, if you start at different initial conditions, um, where are we going to wind up as t goes to infinity? And you should get a similar analysis here that for some initial conditions, you'll wind up heading back towards the equilibrium at 1 minus 1. And for other initial conditions, you'll head off to, towards infinity for x or y.